The truth about Susanoo and his OP sword, the power of Okita Suji, the Greek brothers getting a side chapter, and much more to go over in Record of Ragnarok chapter 87 spoilers. I hope you enjoy. When it comes to the bonus chapter that we get at some mums, I believe the previous one was about Nostradamus. This time, it's pretty much the Greek brothers going over the whole situation when Poseidon almost killed Adamas. If you don't remember, Hades pretty much requested Beelzebub to save his life, with Hermes also playing a role in delivering Adamas's almost dead body to Beelzebub for the sake of saving his life. The bonus chapter here seems to be quite light-hearted unfortunately, with Hades making fun of Adamas, which is the origin of his new name. However, we do get something that is a little bit more interesting. A few panels showing Poseidon, who seems to be just chilling with some fish, with Hermes pulling up to Poseidon, being I guess the ultimate instigator again, revealing to him that Adamas is still alive and that he was saved by Beelzebub, and questions Poseidon if we should let Adamas live. So as always, Hermes is always up to something, always starting something and being very menacing, even in these bonus chapters. I really do hope he does have some major role in the future of the Record of Ragnarok story. Apart from all that, we see that Sasaki Kodro is going to be watching the Okita Suji fight alongside Musashi Miyamoto, the person who actually killed Sasaki when he was alive, the person who was I guess one of the main commentators in Sasaki's fight. So seeing these two interact is going to be pretty interesting, but of course a main purpose of this, both of them being swordsmen, with Masashi as potentially the most famous in history when it comes to this, and of course a monster in power, and Sasaki now after defeating gods, breaking into a new realm of power completely. All of this and these two watching a fight already being shocked is probably leading into the build up of Okita Suji being a superior swordsman, or the might of Susano being quite extreme, and of course his skill as well. Something that we get to actually see expanded on in this chapter, so let's continue. The proper beginning of their fight is Okita charging Susano with this swing, highlighting his speed once again. If you haven't read Requiem of the Shinsugumi, Okita is very clearly a speedy fighter and uses this to pretty much overwhelm his opponent. But the question is, will this work on the likes of Susano? He's able to land the attack on the sheath of Susano's weapon, which is beginning to crack, something since his initial reveal we've been waiting for. I'm a little surprised it happened in pretty much the first time these two exchanged, but can't complain too much. And the reveal of the sword comes with lore about it, and how it isn't exactly what we thought it was, considering the entire lore reveal we got about Susano in the previous chapters. It seems to be forged by gods and humans actually working together for the goal of the perfect sword or perfect weapon, with one of these actually being this guy, pretty much the Greek god of metalworking, craftsmen, volcanoes, etc. A Greek god of many things, which is pretty cool, but once again, brings forward the Greek gods in the Record of Ragnarok story. Even after we've had all of their fights actually conclude, we're still getting a lot of information about them, whether it be bonus chapters or them just sneaking their way into flashbacks about some other gods in the series, which is kind of funny. I guess the authors really love the Greek gods, but I'm not sure who these other guys are. Probably when the translations and the full chapter comes out, we'll get these. However, it's important to recognize the leakers for providing all the stuff we have in today's video. The sword itself goes by the name Kasanagi, which is a sword closely connected to Japanese mythology and Amaterasu mostly, which isn't something we really expected Susano to be using, mainly considering his lore drop about how he used a different type of sword to defeat the serpent Orochi, and the tail of this serpent released the legendary divine weapon that we got to see in that chapter which Susanoo proceeded to use to pretty much kill the evil god of Japanese mythology and how he got the title of the strongest god slayer. Perhaps at some point after that, Susanoo handed this weapon to these like blacksmiths to perfect it or evolve it in some way 
and that's how we have the Kusanagi in the Record of Ragnarok story. Perhaps that's how they're going to explain it all. We'll have to wait and see. That's just my perspective and what I think's going on currently with all of this. We get it confirmed that Susnor is pretty much a perfect swordsman or at the very least mastered every form when it comes to swordsmanship. Something that is pretty much expected for the really only god using a sword in the Record of Ragnarok story. The most skilled swordsman this naturally expected but a pretty badass panel. Apart from that the sword itself is a lot thinner and smaller compared to what I expected. Maybe it's a weapon that can actually change forms and Susanoo will be using this. Just considering how big the wrapping of it seemed to be, I expected something more large to be honest, but more I guess typical samurai like sword. I'm very excited to see the clashes between the two and maybe we're going to get more information about Okita's sword as well. But for right now we've gotten a lot of build up about Susanoo. A lot of lore about him and even a whole chapter pretty much dedicated to his sword from what we've seen so far. Naturally I expect much more to be revealed in the full chapter, a lot more stuff and probably exchanges with Susanoo using the sword. I still predict that Susanoo will probably be in the lead when it comes to the early stages of the fight as right now for what we've seen there's only really been one attack thrown. Something else I guess a lot of you guys are still waiting for, including me, is an update on the whole Buddha, Odin and Belzebub situation. In the leaks for this month, we got nothing. It's very possible that the full chapter will have something and I hope it does. It's been over two months now since that occurred. One of the most wild and honestly hype things to ever happen in Record of Ragnarok. Early in the story when we had Buddha fighting the Lucky Gods and Loki, that was pretty hype, but Odin finally making his move, Belzebub being a menace, and Buddha pretty much being the main character pushing the broader story forward is one of the best parts of that record of Ragnarok outside of the amazing fights in the tournament itself. And honestly, considering what we've gotten for Okita Tsuji vs Susano now, which has been going on for three chapters, the stuff Buddha created in that whole interaction is far more interesting. So I hope we do cut back to that shortly. That is something we all want. And of course, if you need chapter links or want to join the Discord where we're talking about Record Ragnarok on the daily, road to 10,000 members, link in the description, free to join. Also, check out my recent videos ranking all the humans and gods weakest to strongest alongside other stuff coming out on the Mysterious Weave YouTube channel. Shout out to these members absolute mad lad that get various benefits such as these ones, but that's it guys, peace.